Acts chapter 8. And in this chapter, what we see, church, we see major persecution going on. We see major persecution going on because everybody was not happy with this movement of God. Some folk don't want to even see you coming now because you decide to live your life right. Amen. And you have God on your tongue. You don't have nonsense on your tongue anymore. You have edification on your tongue. You're speaking life. You're not speaking death. You're speaking freedom. You're speaking hope. Amen. Amen. You're speaking prosperity. Amen. You're speaking abundant living. Amen. And you don't allow negativity to affect your life. Amen. Amen. And not only is it a, 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 a personal a life-changing experience, but it'll change the atmosphere, it'll change the situation. Godliness will change your circumstance, amen. It'll change your outlook on life, it'll change your way of thinking, it'll change the way you see things, amen. A walk with Christ is a newness, amen. And everybody not happy, you know, with this newness. Everybody wasn't happy with this move of God in the book of Acts. And even right now in our own life, everybody is not happy. So we see in the book of Acts, we see that a major persecution was taking place and and it broke out and the church is scattered. But I want to really take a look at that word persecution tonight. Um, I want to look at the meaning of persecution. I want to look at the effects of persecution. And when you look at the term persecution, it stands for hostility or ill treatment. And as I revisit this text, I noticed that God he used persecution, amen? He used it to spread the good news of the gospel of Jesus Christ. I need for you to understand when you go through things in life, it's not for you to shut down, amen? amen. It's for you to keep moving forward, amen? amen? God uses situations and circumstances in our life to get us where he wants us to be. It's not for you to run. It's not for you to hide. It's for you to continue to move forward. And God <laughs> has a way of making his will be done. Even when you don't understand it, even when you don't see it, God's will is always being done. Amen? Amen. So I need you to... Uh, realize that the people were scattered, right? And because the people were scattered, they were able to tell folk about the goodness of the Lord. Now, you got to understand they were scattered because they was being persecuted. They were being chased. They were being hunted down. But even though they were going through what they were going through, that gave them the opportunity, wherever their feet ended up landing, that gave them the opportunity to tell somebody about God in spite of what they was going through. Amen? Amen. Amen. I need y'all to pay attention. I need y'all to pay attention, all right? Now, Christians, we got to learn to recognize the value of persecution. Amen? Amen. Even to the point where we rejoice in persecution. That's what the Bible says, count it all joy. When we go through these dire temptations, we go through these trials and tribulations, we need to learn how to rejoice in persecution. Now, when they was going through persecution, it wasn't to impress nobody. God wasn't trying to impress nobody. It was designed by God because persecution has great spiritual value. When you go through things, God is working on you in the midst of your, of your persecution. Now, I need you to see this. I need you to see this because my first point tonight is that persecution allows us to share in a unique fellowship with God. Now, when you look at the Bible, Paul outlined a number of things. Uh, he had surrendered for the cause of Christ. Such losses, however, when he was going through, he viewed it as rubbish. The things that he lost, it, it didn't even matter to him. In the Bible, he, he called it dumb. You know, he, he didn't care about what he lost. He didn't care what he was going through because he said it was dumb that he might share in the fellowship of Christ's suffering, right? Now, in the Bible, Paul even counted his chains as a grace, amen? He counted his chains as favor that God bestowed upon him. And what did that do? What does persecution do? What did it do to Paul? It brings us closer to the Lord. And it also allowed people to see us rejoice 
in the midst of trials and tribulations and make them wonder and ask questions, which gives us the opportunity to tell somebody how good God is. Amen. Remember when the Apostle Paul was in jail, mm. chained to the wall. Mm. He did not let himself be chained to the wall, stop him from trusting God. Mm. He did not let the chains, he did not let the body stop him from praising God. Matter of fact, that made him praise God even more. Amen? Amen. Because he was suffering for righteousness. Sake. He took it as an honor to be persecuted. Amen? Amen? And while he was chained to the wall, uh, while he was chained, I call it, he was in jail. He was locked up while he was locked up. Amen? Yeah, yeah. And even though he was locked up, being locked up, he still had a praise on his lips. Mm, amen. Amen. But what did that do? Everybody in the jail knew that this man was chained up. They knew that he was locked up, subject to be killed. But he still had God on his mind. And he still was rejoicing. He still was saying, I could imagine he had the whole jail wall. Right? Because something happened on that night. The Spirit of God showed up. Mm. See, when you're going through yeah. power, when you're going through trials and tribulations, I dare you to just stop praising God because yes. the praises yes. of God will shake up the situation. Yes, yes, and that's what it yes, is in the Bible. Yes, yes. They begin to praise God. They begin to shake up the situation. They praise God so hard that when he showed up, the kind of see who was praising him so hard, the chains fell off. Hmm, my God. So you don't even understand. Your praise will cause the, uh, the, the yoke of bondage to fall right up off of you. Yes. Amen. And not only that, the people began to see, the people began to hear, and the people began to wonder, why is this man praising God and he in a world of trouble? Mm -hmm. God will show up in the midst of your trouble Amen. when you praise him. Yes, See, you don't focus on the problem. You don't fo focus on the right. persecution. You focus on Thank the God. praise, the power, and the promise. Yes. Did y'all get that? Yes. And, 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 and praise will, will allow us to, to, to see this, this, this walk with, with, with God. This is unique. This is not like any other walk. This is different. Amen. And in some cases, it's unexplainable. Mm. People can't even understand how somebody could be catching so much blues and still have a praise on their mouth. Why? Because I have a relationship with God. Amen. Amen. And then what did that do? That gave him an opportunity to witness. That gave him an opportunity to tell somebody about how good God is. And what happened in the text, y'all? What happened in the text? The jail shook. It opened up. Amen. And they were able to bounce. They were able to leave. And the jailer got scared to death. Hmm. Huh? They said, don't worry about it. We ain't going nowhere. Are y'all with me? Hmm. Because we don't have to worry about nothing. Amen. Because we know that God is with us. And what did that make the jailer do? Somebody who read their Bible. What happened with the jailer? He gave his life to the Lord. So you have to understand sometimes, church, that your persecution ain't even about you. Your persecution is about God getting glory out of what you happen to be enduring at that time. Amen? Amen. So that endurance is building your character. That's what the Bible said. That endurance is allowing you to have patience. That endurance is allowing you to learn how to persevere, right? And what does that do? That strengthens your character and that gives you even more hope. Amen? In God. Amen. All right. So, so persecution allowed them to share in fellowship with God and allowed them and gave them opportunity to witness and testify. Now, a lot of people don't understand this. But in all truth, persecution is good for you. Persecution is good for the believers. James argues that the trials and the tests of Christian faith develop endurance and maturity in the life of the believer. Amen? Amen. They, 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 those trials and tribulations, it develops us. You get developed, you get strong, you get strengthened when you're going through some stuff. You can't tell nobody about nothing if you ain't been through it. Amen. You ain't able to stand the next storm coming if you weren't able to withstand the one before. See, the storm you're going through right now is preparing you to endure the storm that's coming your way. 
Because yeah. God said, you're going to have some trials, you're going to have some tribulations. He already said, matter of fact, he said that he's going to allow them to come to y'all. know what we read in the Bible in Second Chronicles. He said, and when I uh, uh, stop the rain from falling, when I allow the pestilence to come and devour, when I allow this stuff to happen, he allows it so that you can build a unique relationship with him, and in building that relationship, you become a more developed, a more patient, a, a, a Christian that's able to endure some things. Amen. Did y'all get that? Amen. Amen. As steel is tempered in the forge, right? You know, because you got the shape, and you got, you know, it's like, when you're making something out of steel, right? It's not that beautiful object that you're trying to make. You got to put that steel in some hot fire, right? And, 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 and then the blacksmith got to beat on that steel, right? And then you got to put it in some fire some more. And then you got to beat on that steel. And then you got to put it in some fire some more. But while you put it in the fire and you beat it, notice what the blacksmith is doing all the time. He's shaping it and he's making it and he's molding it into what it is going to be. That's why we have to go through trial. That's why we have to suffer because those beatings are for our benefit. Amen. They're shaping us and making us and molding us into what it is that God has called us to be. But you have to get prepared for that. It don't happen overnight because whatever God has prepared for you to be, you're going to have to be able to handle it. Amen. See, I had to get prepared to be a pastor. My skin, my skin had to get thick. Yeah. Are you with me? I had to learn how to pray. I had to learn how to get on my knees. I had to learn how to understand people. I had to learn temperance and prudence. You know, understand what I'm saying? I had to learn how to bite my tongue. I had to go through some things. There had to be some headaches. There had to be some hiding. There had to be some folk that let me down. There had to be some disappointment. So when God put me in the office of a pastor, I would be prepared for it. It had to be some spiritual beatdowns. Are y'all with me? Amen. It had to be some 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 show enough let down because God was preparing me to deal with people. Amen. So some people had to turn my back on me. So when they turned their back on you as a pastor, it wouldn't bother you. Keep on moving. Amen. Some people had to uh, 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 let you down. Some people had to put you down. Some yeah. people had to yeah. gossip. They had yeah. to spread rumors. They had to do a lot of things. I had to go through some things so I can build up my faith, so I can build up my trust, so I can build up my testimony. Amen. Did Amen. Amen. Yes. We have to go through some things. It's good for the believers. See, a, a Christian that yields graciously to persecution, what does that do? That demonstrates that he is of superior qualities compared to his adversity. See, my faith is stronger than what I'm going through. Mm -hmm. Did y'all get that? Yeah. See, yeah. see, your faith got to be stronger in the situation. I don't care what's going on. Your faith got to outweigh what you're going through. Amen. That's why you got to hold on to your faith. What the song said, holding on to my faith, I'm pressing my way. I'm holding on to my faith because that's giving me the strength to press. Amen. Are y'all with me? Yeah. See, you got, to, you got to know, you got to know, you got to know, you got to know that you know based on what you already been through that God is able to get you through what you're going through right now. Amen. See, the, the persecution is good for us. Yeah. Somebody turn to turn to Hebrews chapter eleven and, and, and thirty eight. Read that for me. Hebrews chapter eleven and thirty eight. Of whom the world was not worthy, they wanted to start at 37. Oh, let me start at, mm, I'm going to start at 36. Okay. And others had trials of cruel mockings and scores of jay, moreover, of bonds and imprisonments. They were stoned, and they were sworn asunder, they were tempted, were slain with the sword. They wanted about in sheepskins and goatskins, 
being destitute, afflicted, and tormented, of whom the world was not worthy. They wandered in the desert and in the mountains and in the dens and in the caves. And these all having obtained a good report through faith, received not the promise. God had provoked some better thing for us, that they without us should not be made perfect. Listen here, church. Those folks went through some things. Amen. Amen. People in the Bible, they was ducking in caves, they was running, they was always facing adversity. The children of God was going through some things, amen. But but in going through, they were made stronger, church. Amen. Are y'all with me? Y'all gotta understand what the wilderness is designed to do. Are y'all with me? Yeah. The wilderness is designed to make you stronger. Yeah. Because God works on his folk when they in the wilderness. God can't work on you when everything is nice and hunky dory and the sun is shining and you got a nice cool breeze because everything is all right. God works on you when you're going through some stuff. Because Amen. in the wilderness, you got to depend on God. Amen. In the caves, you got to depend on God. In the valley, you got to depend on God. In the midst of persecution, you have to depend on God. When you're getting persecuted by people, you got to depend on God. Amen. Amen. It's easy to be hateful. Yes. Yep. But, but, but a Christ likeness, it's easy to give up. But a Christ likeness, it's easy to throw in the towel. But a Christ likeness, a dependence on God produces a blessing in the face of all opposition. Amen. Are y'all with me? Amen. Peter says, <laughs> of Jesus when they hurled their insults at him. He didn't retaliate. When he suffered, he made no threats. Instead, he entrusted himself to him who judges justly. In the midst of what Christ was going through, he still trusted God. Amen. Are y'all with me? So what, does, what, what, what am I saying? When you're going through stuff, it's good for you. Amen. When you're going through stuff, it gives you, and I'm going to tell you like this, folk who've never believed in God before, let them start going through something. Yeah. They're going to call on the name yes, of Jesus. Yes, they will. Because God breaks you all the way down to nothing until you have no other alternative but to believe and trust in him. Yes, See, the yes. Israelites forgot about this when they was in the wilderness. See, the wilderness was preparing them for their promise. What was supposed to happen in the wilderness? In the wilderness, all the ungodliness was supposed to fall off. In the wilderness, you were supposed to trust God. In the wilderness, okay, God, we hungry. Okay, I'm going to give you some quail. God, we thirsty. Even though this water is bitter and contaminated, I'm going to give you some sweet water, all right? Even though it's hot and burning up in the desert, I'm going to let a cool breeze come by you. Even though you don't know your way, uh, by nighttime, I'm going to guide you by a pillar of fire. And in the daytime, the glory of my essence is going to guide you. Mm. Are y'all with me? The wilderness was supposed to prepare the people for the prophet. Everything that was not like God was supposed to die off. But guess what? My God. They didn't even give God an opportunity in the wilderness. That's our problem. When we face persecution, we don't give God an opportunity. We look for any and every excuse not to. Amen. We try to do it on our God, you take it too long, so we're gonna make our own God. Come on now. Did they build a little golden cap? God, you take it too long. We've been in the wilderness for too long. You gotta stay in the wilderness long because I'm working on you. Amen. I got to get some stuff out of you because you're going to mess around and mess your promise up. You're not even ready for the promise land yet. I got to work some stuff out of you. I got to chip some stuff out of you. I don't want you to be a chip off the old block. I don't want you to be like your father who cursed me, who didn't have belief in me, amen, didn't have faith. In me. I don't want you to be like them folk who came out of Egypt, act like they know me, but really did. My God. Mm. Are y'all with me? So y'all got to say, matter of fact, some of y'all can't even come. You don't want to be like that. You don't want to be stuck in the wilderness because you're not, a, you're not willing to let God bless you in the midst of what you're going through. See, I'm glad 
of all the stuff. I, I'm not mad at my mom because of how she was when I was a kid. Amen. Because that made me who I Amen. am. I'm Amen. not mad at my dad no more because he wasn't around. Because that's why I'm a good dad. If I have, maybe if I had a dad, I wouldn't be a good dad. Amen. But because I didn't have a dad, everything I wanted from a dad, I give to my kid. Amen. Did y'all get Amen. that? Because of persecution. Because I went through everything that I wanted in my mom. I had to find a wife to be a mother to my kid. Like the mother that I want. Amen. 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 Are y'all with me? Why? Because I went through some things. Amen. Are y'all with me? Amen. I went through some things. I tried to eat right to the best of my ability because I was laid up in the hospital with tubes all up in me. Amen. I go to the gym every day because I don't want to have no heart attack from sitting around going. I had to go to the doctor. I had to get to me. I had to go through some things because it was preparing me for what God wants me. Boy, you got to be healthy because I got work for you to do. Amen. 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 Praise God. Amen. I had to fall out with them friends, even though it might have hurt it for a while, but it don't matter no more, because they wasn't made me no good in the first place. Amen. So I had to go through that, so I could know that it's all right to be alone. That's right. Praise God. Yeah. Because when you're alone, that's when God can work that's for you, right. because you don't got to right. feel this thing tonight. Yeah. Yeah. That's why the church felt that persecution of God allowed that to happen because he is getting ready for them to turn the world upside down. That's what the man said. These are the ones who turn the world upside down. Y'all better get in the book of Acts. Amen. Huh? Amen. That's what happens in persecution. It's good for us. You got to go through some stuff. You got to leave some stuff behind. Yeah. But what did Jesus do? He trusted in God. What did the apostles do? They trusted in God, even unto death. Great persecution in chapter 8. Now, thirdly, this is what made the church attractive. Because Christian persecution, it, it enables the believer to better value the support of true Christian friends. Y'all ain't even get that. Yeah. See, I go around true Christian friends. Yeah. Yeah. You understand what I'm saying? Because I value my true Christian friend. Because, because how does that happen? Don't you know conflict can bring faithful children of God together? Yeah. And, 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 and that conflict allows you to call and encourage and support folk that wouldn't get it from nowhere else. Y'all don't understand why I call and I encourage and I'm not trying to hear past I'm going through this. I'm not trying to hear past I'm going through that. I'm trying to tell you about faith in the God who been blessing me. Amen. I Amen. call a lot of y'all. Y'all just set the phone and y'all take it and y'all swipe it to the left. That's all the truth. You do. Oh, pass the call. I'm calling to encourage you. Yeah. I'm calling to let you know that Jesus Christ still is in control. Amen. I'm calling to let you know that whatever you did, God still loves you. Amen. God is slow to anger and quick to love. I got to encourage you because you're going through some things right now. You're going through some persecution right now. As a matter of fact, yeah. sometimes I need for y'all to call me. Amen. Yeah. Start calling the pastor sometime. Do like Big Mike and God and call me. Amen. See if I'm doing all right. Yeah. As I ain't shopping as I am, so does a brother shopping a brother. And a sister shopping a sister. But see, when you're going through something, persecution will allow your godly friends to minister to you. Amen. Women and men, women and men of God must help each other. Look at what was happening in the book of Acts. They only hung with each other. Amen. See, God will allow persecution to happen so we can be around just each other. Amen. You can't go around them, I can't go around them, so guess what? We got to come around each other. Amen. God ain't even get that in the Holy Ghost. Yeah. God allowed you to have conflict and me to have conflict so we can come together as one people of God. Amen. And then it allows us to have concern for one another. Yes. See, this is the church that has, I'm a pastor, I'm concerned about you. Amen. Ain't no way in the world I'm going to let you starve and I'm eating. Amen. Amen. Ain't no way in the world you're going to be cold and I'm going to be warm. Amen. 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 But, but, but see, the thing about it, God will allow that so that we can have a godly connection to one another. Amen. Okay, here it is in the Bible. 1 John 3 and 17. But if anyone 
has the world's goods and see his brother in need, yet closes his heart against him? How does the love of God abide in him? How can you have these big churches and these big cathedrals and you got people sitting in your congregation that you know hungry and thirsty and naked, amen, but you talk about you love God and you ain't trying to make sure your brother belly ain't ground. Amen. Huh? That's what persecution does. Persecution will also humble somebody. Persecution will humble your butt and allow you to come back to the same people that you're running from because you know you're going to get some godly help from a godly person. Amen. Did y'all get that? Amen. Listen, Romans 15 and 1 says, We who are strong have an obligation to bear with the failings of the weak and not to please ourselves. Amen. Amen. If it's somebody that you know suffering, yeah. you're supposed to be a blessing to them. Amen. Especially if you know they're suffering and you call yourself a man and woman of God. See, God allows persecution to happen so you can see who your true friend is. Amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. Mm -hmm. Did y'all get that? Yeah. Yeah. He wants you to go, listen, he wants you to go through some stuff so you can see who you don't got. I, I told my man this, uh, uh, I go visit my man all the time. Our, our deacon, you know what I mean? And so, we were talking. And he said, everybody, Pastor, who I was going around, everybody who I was still talking about my man, everybody who I was still talking about I have love for, they ain't even been to see me, and I'm less than 20 minutes away. Yeah. Ain't even sent me $5. But guess who take care of? Mm -hmm. The Cold Spring Bible yeah. Challenge. Guess who go see him at least once a week? His pastor. Amen. God allowed him to go through what he's going through. Guess what he's doing on Sunday? He's bringing the word of God. Guess what he's doing on Wednesday? He's teaching Bible study. Because God had to break him down, yeah. allow him to go yeah. through some persecution so he can begin to shape and make and mold him into who he want to be and show him yeah. who he needs to be around. Amen. 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 See, I told you, God will use persecution to catapult you to where he wants you to be in life. He lets it happen yeah. on purpose. Yes, Lord. Don't got nothing to do with the devil. The devil don't got that much power. Yeah, no, no. no power. Mm -mm. Yes. He only got the power that we give to him. Amen. 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 Hardship and persecution, it can stimulate God's people toward a greater resolve to love and comfort one another and lift one another up to the throne of grace and prayer yes, as well. Lord. See, when we're going through stuff, we're supposed to pray for each other. That's right. When I know you're going through something, when I know you're being persecuted, your persecution might activate my prayer life. Amen. Y'all ain't even get that. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Because I might have not prayed all week, but I see Renard going through something, so now I got to get down on my knees and pray. Yeah. While I'm down on my knees praying for Renard, that makes me pray for myself. Based on what he was doing. That's right. Amen. 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 It's nothing like an a, a, a unpleasant situation to help us reach a greater level of brotherly love for one another. Yeah, that's right. You understand what I'm saying? See, I have proven that I am a godly man. Why? Because he said in the Bible, you can tell if they are my disciples based on how they love one another. Amen. Huh? Amen. Amen. Persecution will start you loving folks. Hmm. Amen. And it'll start folks loving you too. But it activate, activates a prayer life. Yeah. Now, for most of us, when we pray, we pray, you know, Lord, uh, uh, somebody stood up and Sunday and they said they need a job. A blessed cousin with a job. Uh, uh, bless them with a car. Bless them with some good health. Bless them to be safe. And if we know somebody well, you know, I'm praying for your marriage. I'm praying for your relationship. And there's nothing wrong with praying for these things, church. In fact, the Bible encourages us to pray for everything and do so, amen, without having to worry. Amen. 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 Philippians 4 and 6. And, and, it, and, and, and it tells us to be anxious for nothing, right? Right. Don't think ain't that a sin? Amen. But through prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, is that what it says? Amen. Make my request be made known to God. Right now, God, I'm praying for my brother. I'm, I, you know what? I'm not going to even worry, and I'm going to tell him not to worry. Ain't hey, that's what I tell y'all, church. Amen. Don't I tell y'all don't worry about it. If you're going to worry, don't pray. If you're going to pray, don't worry. Amen. Huh? 
Don't worry about it. You know, you can you can have a thought about it and you're going to be concerned. But right. once you put it in God's hand, that's it's it. Like, that's you right. believe in God. Amen. 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 Don't worry about your finances. Don't worry about your job. He said, don't worry about tomorrow because tomorrow is going to take care of yourself. Don't worry about what you're going to eat. Don't worry about what you're going to wear because people who don't believe in me worry about that stuff. Right. Amen. Is that the Bible, church? Amen. Amen. It's right to pray for health and for good things to happen. Somebody read uh, 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 three I John and, and, and one and two. That's John uh, 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 John three one and two. You know you got first John, second John, third John. One and two. Read that. Read that song. The truth is knowing that we will die for everything. Are y'all with me? We can go to God for everything. Amen. And so my prayer is that God you do it because I know that you can do it. Amen? Amen. That, that, that is my prayer. That is my prayer. And here it is right here, Rita. I had to clean that up because this is what it says. Behold, I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in health even as thy soul prospereth. All right? So what is John doing? He's praying. He said, it is his prayer in most translations. He said, but love I wish. And then uh, uh, translations say, I pray above all things, that you may prosper. That is my prayer. I want you to be blessed. I want you to be poor. I want you to be blessed. My boys used to say that even when I was in the streets. Kenny, you like to see people shine. I want to see you shine, baby. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm not a hater, baby. Shine, baby. Because if you shine, we shine. Amen. <laughs> yeah, I want the Cold Spring Bible Chapel to look good. I want y'all to be fly. I want y'all to ride good. I want to see y'all eating at the finest restaurant. I see. I want to see y'all with the baddest vines on y'all back. Are y'all with me? I yeah. want you to shine. It is my prayer that you get that good job. It is my prayer that you find that husband. It is my prayer that your children be blessed. I want you to prosper. That's my prayer. It is my prayer that you healthy. And it is my prayer that your soul prosper, meaning get yes. closer to God. Amen. Have that spiritual awakening. Fall in line with what it is that God has for you. Amen. Y'all know it, it, it is very important because praying for others is important because it fulfills the New Testament command. Yes, First Timothy 2 and 1 says, we are to pray for everybody. Amen. 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 We ought to pray for government leaders. Amen. First Timothy 2 and 2. It said we ought to pray for our government leaders. Listen, we supposed to be, I mean, I understand who our president, but we supposed to be praying for that man. Amen. That's the ruler of the free world, little do y'all know. We supposed to pray that he make godly decisions. And you got to understand that the Bible teaches us who's in authority. God allowed him to be in authority. For what? I don't know. Maybe we put him in authority so we can show up start praying. Amen. Maybe we put him in authority so we can show up and have faith in him. So we can show up to him. Because this dude ain't about to give us nothing. So we got to pray to the one who holds all things in his hand. Amen. We got to pray to the source yeah. that he sent us a resource. I don't care who the president is. He said he ain't going to see the righteous forsaken, nor a seed bag for bread. He might have put that man in there to really make us get close to him. God looks like we better start praying for the world. Look like they're going to cut this and they're going to cut that. We better start praying. That yes, yes, pray yes, for yes. Stop talking about Mayor Byron Brown. Pray for Mayor Byron Brown. Stop Amen. talking about crystal people. Yes. Pray for crystal people. Amen. Pray for your council member. Pray for the governor. Amen. Amen. The Bible said pray for them folk. Amen. We ought to pray for the unsaved. First Timothy Stop talking about folk who don't go to church. They might not go to church because they see how you live. Yeah. Yeah. 
God. Yeah. Why are you talking about them? Pray for them. Huh? We ought to pray for fellow Christians. Ephesians 16 tells us, I mean 6 and 18 tells us to pray. Amen. We ought to pray for the ministers of the gospel. Don't y'all know pastors go through stuff? Pastors catch more hell than y'all do because they are the pastor. Yes. The devil always attacking us. Why? Because we the head. If you can kill the head, the body gonna die. Amen. Why do you think ministries is failing and churches is closing? The church closing? <laughs> y'all even get that. Yeah. <laughs> you gotta pray. We gotta pray for our people to get focused, get the focus off ourselves and on the needs of the people around us. We're supposed to carry each other's burden because we fulfill the law of Christ when we do that. That's what Galatians 6 and 2 tell us. We fulfill the law. You got to pray for folks. And persecution allows folks to start praying. Mm. Amen. 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 Persecution brings us closer. Amen. When Amen. people are going through stuff, that brings them close to one another. Amen. Amen. Prayer helps us make it through persecution. And even in the face of persecution, we can press on. We can thank God for his grace and patience with us. Amen. Amen. That's what persecution allows us to do. We can express gratitude for those whom we love in the Lord and who stand with us in a time of distress. I could thank God for Brother Renard. I could thank God for Moni. I could thank God for John. I could thank God for the Joneses. Amen. I could thank God for my church who stands in the gap for me in prayer. Amen. Amen. Who lifts me up to the Lord because of what I'm going through. And so what does that do? That makes us close. That makes Pastor love his church even more. Amen. That makes the church love their pastor more. When he can stand up with them when they're going through something, something. I don't need nobody to tell me that they love me. Show me you love me. Amen. 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 And through persecution, we're going to love each other. Amen. Amen. Did y'all get that? Yeah. Is this something anybody like? Amen. 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 We got to pray for those who accuse us. Amen. We got to pray for those who misuse us. That's right. We got to pray for those who abuse us. Amen. Amen. Pray for that fool. Yes, Amen. Huh? He talking all that stuff. I'm not going to punch you in the mouth today, but I think I'm going to pray for you. Yeah. Because That's the right. The punch that God going to give you going to hurt you a lot more. That's right. That's Amen. Just stop my Amen. voice and do my prophet no harm. You better get up out of Pastor Kenny's faith before I call my daddy. When I was little, I ain't have to, I ain't know uh, 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 the daddy to call, but now that I'm grown, I know I call my daddy. And daddy said, vengeance is mine. Amen. Daddy said, I'm strong and mighty. Are you with me? Amen. Huh? And I'm mighty in battle. That's what he said. He said, don't even worry about the fight, son. I got your back. I'm going to fight for you. The battle is not yours. Y'all better listen to this in the Holy Ghost. Amen. You better pray for him. Matter of fact, God don't even do nothing to him. Have mercy on them. Yes, That's what you get your yes, back. Amen. Amen. Messing with your baby. Yes. Amen. <laughs> yeah. So when we face an oppression, when you get victimized, maltreated, you know, when even when they discriminate against you, when they hound you, try to intimidate you, some folks still be trying to bully you. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Keep on believing and keep on trusting. That's right. Remain That's faithful right. like the church That's did right. in the book of Acts and spread the good news of the God. gospel. Yeah. That's right. So so we see they were being persecuted, right? And let's get back to Philip because I really want to uh, 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 show y'all this in the text. Here it is, right? We got to realize, so now we, he was being persecuted, but through a persecution, the spirit still will lead you. See, we got to realize that we have to allow the Spirit to be our guide no matter what we go through. And so we got to realize, just like Peter had, I mean, Philip had to travel, excuse me, we must also realize that as we travel through our day to day lives and witness, we got to be led by the Spirit. Yes, Amen. Don't you just start opening your mouth, man, talking that mumbo jumbo. Yeah. I had to tell a preacher Sunday, man, be quiet. Mm -mm. That's mumbo jumbo. Nobody want to hear that. Well, the spirit, let me have spirit in me now. Stop it. Stop it. No, he did. They're going to make a spirit on that. 
That was all you, baby. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just gonna tell the truth. We gotta allow the spirit. To, listen, it was the spirit that told Phil up to walk down that road. The spirit told him head south. That, that, ain't that's what the Bible said? It was the spirit that even coordinated the unit to go in the direction that Philip was going. That was the spirit of God that orchestrated that. And it was the spirit of God that put it on the heart of the unit to read who Jesus Christ was. Mm -hmm. Why? Because Philip already knew that story. But listen, this, God led this man to Philip so he could confirm what God was already putting on this man's heart. Mm -hmm. So you got to understand, when you're operating out of the spirit, see this is what I, I, I believe in the gift of prophecy. Yeah. But I don't believe God going to tell you uh, 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 something about me that he ain't tell me first. Amen. <laughs> don't come up to me. And God told me to tell you, bro, he didn't tell me that. He didn't tell because when you read the Bible, only thing the prophets do is confirm what God already said. The prophet ain't said, well, David, God told him. Nah, David already knew that it was of God because God had already told him. Amen. God uses the prophet to confirm what thus saith the Lord because it ain't the prophet talking. It's what thus saith the Lord. And God spoke through the prophet Isaiah. And God spoke through the prophet Jeremiah. He ain't saying, here, Big Mike, I want you to go tell Kenny something. Nah, Big Mike, I'm going to speak through you and tell Kenny and it's going to be confirmed through you because I already told Kenny. That is, okay, all right. Amen. That is, we got to be led. In order, listen, in order for the ministry to grow, we got to be led by the Spirit. Huh? In order to grow in life, we got to grow by the Spirit. Why? This is what 1 Corinthians 12, 7 and 11 say. But to each one is given the manifestation of the Spirit for the common good. It's given the manifestation of the Spirit, right? Here it is. For to one is given the word of wisdom. From what? Through the Spirit. You don't get wisdom on your own. The Bible says pray for it because God gives it liberally. He gives it to who he wants to give it to. But you get that wisdom based on the persecution and the things that you've been through. Amen. God gives you wisdom through what you went through. Amen. That's why you wise enough to know. Y'all can tell how they act. I ain't going that way. Yeah. 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 I can tell by the way he's talking. I don't think I really want to get in the car with him. <laughs> yeah. Huh? Huh? Through the Spirit and to another, the word of knowledge, what? According to the same Spirit. It's the Spirit of God that gives you knowledge of Him. To another, faith by the same Spirit. And to other, gifts of healing by the same Spirit. And to another, effecting of miracles. And to another, prophecy. And to another, the distinguishing of spirits. And to other, another, various kinds of tongues. And to another, the interpretation of tongues. But one and the same Spirit work all these things. Here it is. Distributed to each one individually as he wills. Amen. Huh? The Spirit leads you based on the way he wants to lead you. That's what he said in the Bible. For I know the plans that I have for you. So I'm going to lead you to these plans. Amen. Did y'all get that? Amen. Why? Because I knew you before you was in the womb. I already had your life designed. So you got to allow me to put you on a train track to your destiny. Amen. Allow the spirit to be your God. Can I be a lamp unto yeah. your feet? Yes. Yeah. 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 Can I? Amen. That's all God said. The ministry grew in the book of Acts because of the Spirit of God, not by the Spirit of man. It was all God. Amen. Based on the persecution that they was going through. They knew it only could have been God. Listen, the more they killed them, the more they multiplied. Mm -hmm. The more they burnt the church down, two more popped up. And then when they started burning churches down, they met on the trees. They met in the houses. They met by the creek. Yeah. Uh, they met on the mountain. They, met, they kept on pushing because the Spirit led them. Y'all ain't getting this. Y'all ain't getting this. Yeah. Listen, the apostles couldn't have made it without the Spirit, and the church couldn't advance without the Spirit either. Why? Why? Because that time of persecution could have broke them down. 
when you're going through stuff, it ain't no good feeling. Mm. Sometimes it beats us down mentally and we get weak and we want to give up. And that's why many folk give up. Yeah. Yeah. But here it is in the Bible. you got to allow God to work because it says in Romans 8 and 26, Likewise, the Spirit helps us in our weakness. Them folk was running for their life. They could have been hungry. They could have been cold. Look at what Paul was going through. He was naked. He was robbed. He was flawed. He was bit by a snake. Now, now, now don't sit up here and act like y'all ain't been bit by no snakes. Come on. Man, please. My spiritual name is Toa. No. I gotta walk through my job tiptoeing every day to make this. Ah, bow, bow. Yeah. The Spirit of God helps me in my weakness. Yeah. Yes. It helps me through the pain. It helps me through the fear. Huh? The Spirit helps us in our weakness. Huh? That's how the church was able to grow. It was the Spirit of God. It wasn't that they were so foxy because it was the Spirit of God that was coming out of their mouth because they was preaching His Word. And His Word is Him. Did y'all get that? Amen. It says, even to the point where, for we do not know what to pray for as we ought to, but the Spirit Himself intercedes with us for us with groanings to deep, too deep for words. Right. Here it is, you praying for something that you really shouldn't be praying for. And while you praying that nonsense, the Spirit really praying for you. Yeah. Oh, God, send me a husband. Spirit saying she don't need no husband right now, God. Work on her faith. Right. She don't need no husband right now because she's irresponsible. How she going to take care of man and she can't even take care of herself? God bless her and her responsibility. <laughs> the Spirit praying for what you need to be prayed for. Amen. And, and, for words. Yeah. Sometimes you need to just get on your knees and shut up. Yeah. Sometimes I get on my knees and I don't say a word. I might be praying for the wrong stuff. <laughs> I be praying for stuff God keeps saying no and I keep asking for it. God said, be quiet. I'll pray for you. <laughs> Y'all didn't even get that in all that. The Holy Ghost is God. So I speak to God on your behalf. Praise God. God on my behalf. Mm. So while I'm praying to God, he's talking to himself in intercede. Oh, my God. Yeah. Tell me my God ain't back. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. You have just tuned in to the Cold Spring Bible Chapel's live broadcast at 100 Northland Avenue in the city of Buffalo, New York. I thank God for the privilege to serve and to be able to share the good news of the gospel. If you want to be a blessing to the Cold Spring Bible Chapel, you can send a love offering to 100 Northland Avenue, zip code 14208, the Cold Spring Bible Chapel, and we definitely will be blessed by your giving. Take the opportunity, again, to listen to the sermon. Let it be a refreshing to your soul. We thank you for the opportunity. God bless you. God's peace and good journey. And again, have a blessed day on purpose.